My name is Sean Cavanaugh, and this will be a video demonstration of infrastructure visibility for public cloud automation. Let's get started. Today we'll be showing a demo using Automation Controller. Automation Controller is the web UI, the front end for the Ansible Automation platform that most people are familiar with. It helps you manage automation at scale. There's a bunch of different features, but today we'll be focused on just the web UI and the concept of job templates. Uh, the lab diagram is quite simple. We have automatically booted two AWS EC2 machines into um, our Amazon VPC, and then we already have Ansible Automation Platform set up. So with that, let's get started. So as soon as we get into the window on the left here will be the web UI for Ansible Automation Platform. And again, this is at uh, Automation Controller, um, previously called Tower, if you're familiar with an older product. This is kind of the evolution of that. Um, the username and password is on the top right of my screen. So it's just admin and Ansible123 for the demo purposes. Um, if we log in here, it defaults to the dashboard. Uh, if the directions are kind of walking through this concept of, of the different features within Automation Controller. And the first one is credentials. I've pre-set up some credentials in here and the two we're using for this demo are the AWS credential. This is actually the Amazon Web Services credential to access the API for Amazon. And then the rel on AWS SSH key. So this is the actual Linux instances that just happen to be running on Amazon. So we're gonna create an inventory because we need to run automation on something. So in this case, we're going to add an inventory. We will call this AWS uh, inventory. I'm just making sure I match what the directions are saying in the right window there. We'll click save and leave the defaults for everything else. And we're gonna have this concept of an inventory source. So this is where we can add a uh, source plugin or basically a dynamic inventory plugin that allows us to grab inventory from something else. So I'm gonna call this AWS source and we're gonna choose Amazon EC2. You can see other options are like GCP, Azure, VMware, and like Red Hat uh, Virtualization and Red Hat Insights. So we're gonna just go and choose Amazon EC2. We need a credential to access that. So this is where we'll add that credential, the AWS credential to access the API. And we have this ability to add a host filter, but we're not gonna use that. I only have those two instances in this demo environment, but this lets me filter on like, so let's say a specific tag. So I'm going to save that. As soon as I save that, um, I have the ability to sync. So I can sync. Um, and if you click the running, um, it will take you to the job template. But you can also click jobs here. And you can see that we kind of drink our own champagne is actually using Ansible uh, job here to actually run that sync. And you can actually see the output in here. So as soon as that runs, we can click back jobs and we can see it's still running. As soon as that finishes running, it'll say successful. And then we have those inventories. So we go back to our inventory, click AWS inventory. And if we click hosts, it'll actually list those two hosts. And we can actually log in there um, and we can expand this JSON window and look at all the facts that it's gathered. So there's a bunch of different uh, information that it has gathered, including the subnet, the subnet ID, VPC ID, what uh, availability zone it's in. So it's in 1E. Um, the group name and so on and so forth. There's like a ton of David data that it just shoots out this giant JSON blob that's not very human friendly, but it's giving us all the information that the API gave us. So the next thing we want to do is like, now that we have these hosts in inventory, like what can we do with them? And we can test if Ansible will even work. So without even running a playbook, what we can do is we can go to inventories again, AWS inventory is just click on hosts, run command. Actually we want to run on these two hosts, run command, and we will choose the ping module. And then we'll click next. We want just a normal uh, default execution environment, the default one that I've baked in here. This is where we will set, we're actually gonna use the SSH key because we're talking directly to the Linux instances that have reachability to the internet. And we'll click launch. And basically this will use the ping module and it kind of auto creates a job template for us so we can just run or just run that ad hoc test. And we see ping pong, ping pong. So it successfully ran. We can also see, cause it's green, um, we can tell that it ran successfully. So on to the next task. So I talked about this concept of a job template. Job templates are extremely important. Um, and we'll kind of break up the anatomy of a job template. For this lab, we're actually 
calling this infrastructure visibility. So this isn't a replacement for monitoring, but it's just our ability to gain insights information by using Ansible info and fact modules about instances wherever they're running. Um, and this gives us kind of situational awareness of what's the status. And it's nice because Ansible is agnostic and can look at multiple clouds, multiple infrastructure, on-premises, et cetera. So a job template is made of three major parts, a credential, how I log into that uh, system, inventories, what is the actual machines that I want to log into, and then project. This is where I sync automation uh, playbooks from. And then I can run that on whatever. But if you break apart a job template, it makes those three core components. There's other settings, but those are the three required things that I need to access them. What am I running on? How do I run them? And what am I running? So let's get started with this. This is a very simple playbook we're going to create. So we're going to create a job template. We're going to click add, add job template. We're going to call it exactly what the directions say, retrieve VPC info. We're going to leave it in job type run. You could also flip to check. This time we're going to run on the demo inventory, not the AWS inventory, because we just need access to that empty inventory because we're just using the AWS API. For a project, I've pre-set up a project. It's just a Git repo or a GitHub repo in this case, AWS demos project. I'm going to choose the default execution environment on my machine. And as soon as I sync this project, it will let me grab playbooks. And the playbook I'm looking for is called info VPCs. It's already been pre-created, but it's on uh, the open internet. So you can look at it on that GitHub repo. And then I need a credential to access this. And since I'm accessing the API, I'm going to click this drop down, click Amazon Web Services, and then click the AWS credential. And that's all I need. I click Save. And then I can click Launch and launch that job. And while it runs, I can actually go into the book to show what that looks like. So here's AWS demos on GitHub. The playbooks are on the playbook directory and then the info VPCs. It's just a very simple 14 line playbook where it retrieves info using the VPC net info. And then it prints that to the terminal window. And we can see that it's already finished in the other window and I can blow this up and click JSON and look at that. So it's gathering information about VPCs for me. It rather the VPC ID, the owner ID. So it's getting me additional information that I wouldn't get from that, uh, just the normal inventory sync. And there's a bunch, um, dozens of modules for different AWS resources out there. But you can see this isn't very human friendly. Um, it works really well and we have structured data, but it's not very helpful for, especially someone who's not tech savvy to look at this and kind of quickly glean information from it. So this last challenge I have is basically this idea of dynamic documentation is we can create really cool information, a way to display information for us so that it's very easy for an administrator to understand what's happening. So in this case, we'll create a website, but you could also create like markdown files. You could upload it to a database. You could use like an IPAM system like Infoblox or Netbox or whatever you use for managing machines or displaying data. In this case, I literally just create a very simple HTML website with like a little bit of JavaScript just so it works really clean. And you can see if I have like dozens of VPCs, I can now see really quickly how many instances are in them. And you can see there's a lot of VPCs that have just been kind of uh, orphaned where there's nothing in them they are not being used. And this could cause problems for my team. So I think I have, it says there are 21 AWS VPCs configured and 68 instances, but a lot of VPCs are empty and could probably be reaped and re-given to other teams rather than just sitting there idling. So this is where we can quickly gather information from AWS cloud and then display it. So let's, let's dynamically create this website. So I'm logged into that same website. I can see here in the dynamic report, there's nothing there right now. So I'm going to create a job template. I can click add, add job template. We're going to call this create report. We're going to add an inventory is just empty because we're not actually running on the Linux instances. We're running on the uh, AWS API. We're going to load a playbook from that repo. And then we're going to set the uh, execution plan just to the default. The playbook this time is, is called cloud report. And the credentials we're going to use again are the AWS credential that we have preloaded in here. And we're going to click save. We're going to click launch. So 
So as soon as that playbook finishes, it's basically just uh, templating out the information into like a very readable form. You can see that the website is loaded here. And as soon as I refresh, I will get my fancy dynamic documentation. And you can see I could have multiple public clouds if I had more than one set up right now. And then I have my Ansible demo VPC. There's two instances loaded in it. Um, this is the CIDR block, there's one association, and this is the IGW uh, internet gateway for that particular VPC. So it's really quickly, and you can imagine if I had, this is just a demo environment, but if I had dozens of VPCs, it's really quickly to see like which VPCs are full, what subnets are being used, is there VPCs that are empty? So this is just an illustration of like what kind of cool things you can do quickly with that structured data that we retrieve from the cloud. This is only like um, two tasks to uh, retrieve information and then a task to template this. And then I just kind of set up a very simple web server. So what else can we do? The last thing I wanna show is a survey. So we're gonna go back to that job template. And what I think here is cool to show is like, let's say you have one team that um, they don't have access to create job templates or you just want them running them. Maybe they're an they're a audit team that needs to audit and get information about your public cloud environments. Um, so you basically set up like a survey here and then um, it becomes really easy for you to let them run certain things in read-only mode, but they're not uh, changing anything in your public cloud environment. They're just getting information. So you're kind of automating uh, having to talk to other teams maybe in a way. And you can set like the default value. So basically this is creating a toggle switch. So when I launch that job, they can have some ability to modify what's happening in there. Um, and then I got I to gotta press this to turn the survey on. So if I go back to the job report, let's say we just give them access to create this report. As soon as they launch it now, they will get this survey and they get a drop down box to choose this. So it's really human friendly. They don't need to know what these values are, like the actual playbook writer can give them access. So I'm gonna switch to US East 2 where there's nothing running and then I can launch this job. As soon as that finishes, um, you'll see it's on US East 1. As soon as I refresh, I switch it to US East 2 and there's nothing there. You could also change this playbook slightly to just run on like a bunch of regions simultaneously. That's also available. But for this demo, that concludes the demo. We learned how to run some dynamic documentation playbook. Um, you can have access to that playbook in the Ansible Cloud organization. And it's a very simple playbook if you want to grab it. You can see it's just a couple of roles in there. But thank you for watching this demo.